Finchijo is not at all what we expected it to be like. Welcome to another day in Taiwan. We have made our way to a town called Finchihu. We are spending today in Finchihu, exploring this town's connection between lumberjacks and the logging industry and food. What? Oh, wow. Uh, oh, crap. Bean paste? Best barbecued style chicken I've ever had. I think I found where the Colonel found his secret recipe. And it's worth every bite. And while we're here, we're also going to take in a couple of hikes right here in Fenchihu. But we arrived hungry and we already have our first stop picked out. So that is where we're headed to next. To start with, you can tell that the history of this town is really rooted in trains <laughs> because here's a train station behind me and just across from it is the train that we're standing in front of. Also, yes, we are absolutely standing in the middle of the train tracks. We've checked Google Maps and we don't see any trains scheduled to arrive today. So I guess this is safe. We've seen other people do it. So we do as the locals do, I guess. And we walk on train tracks. Perfectly safe, nothing to see here. So although the history of this town is rooted in trains, Today, it's more of a stopover for tourists on their way up to the Alishan Scenic Park area. Hey, remember that I said that according to Google, there weren't any trains coming through? <laughs> Wrong! <laughs> it's not on the track we were standing on though, so we were never in any actual danger. <laughs> this is why Google didn't know about it. today is a donut stop. Now I know what you're thinking, like so American, we're getting donuts. But these, you can smell all throughout the air and apparently they frequently sell out. So we knew we had to come here and compare it to American donuts. So here we go. What? Oh crap. Whoa. Not at all like American donuts. I think they're better. I have no idea what the batter is. It tastes a lot more eggy. It's not like a cake batter that we're used to. It's more like an eggy souffle that's super crispy on the outside and just a little bit doughy on the inside. And it's perfectly warm and we should have bought more than one because genuinely not sure Bill's gonna get more than one bite of this. I love me some donuts. There's absolutely no flavors on top, but that's not to say the donut's not without flavor. It tastes a little bit of vanilla, and like I said, a little bit eggy and just delightfully crisp. It's absolutely delicious. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad we stopped. Oh, Try the donuts. It's really good. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> mm. Sometimes I have to document that Bill gets to eat too. <laughs> As you're walking around Penchihu, you hear this kind of banging sound, which you'll hear in a second. I know it's coming. And it's these rice cakes that are popping out and they're still warm. That was it. And they're still warm and they look different from the rice cakes that we're used to at home, which are thicker and a little bit uh, flatter as well. Really curious to see how this one compares to This is just like a comparison day. Oh. Oh, sticks to your lip. <laughs> That's really good. Once you bite into it, it just sort of melts in your mouth. It is delightfully crispy and buttery and a little bit almondy, I think. Absolutely delicious. Poor girl should get to try some things first today. Mmm. Like so many towns in Southeast Asia, there are 7-Elevens everywhere including in Penchihu. I read on the internet that this is the highest altitude 7-Eleven in Taiwan, but we were just at a 7-Eleven in Alisan, and that was higher than here. So what gives? If you're watching from Taiwan and know the answer, is the answer just that you can't believe everything that you read on the internet? <laughs> I don't know, that's kind of what we're wondering. Anyhow, 7-Eleven here in Penchihu. How cute 
is this town. We're just wandering some of the back alleyways and stumbled across this beautiful pond that Bill is currently filming. <laughs> Well, having those snacks made us realize we're actually hungry for lunch. <laughs> Got a little bit of a late start today. So I think we're gonna seek out the lunch, which is something that this town is really famous for. And I'm really excited to try it. The dogs here crack me up. They just lie down wherever they want. <laughs> so one of the things that Fanchijo is famous for is their bento boxes. We enjoyed bento boxes when we were in Japan. So when we heard that they were famous here, we had to come and try some. <laughs> We found a bento box place where you have the bento box in the restaurant, which is nice because we could use a little bit of a break. We've been walking an awful lot the last few days. So we're gonna try this place right behind me with the red awning. We loved having Japanese bento boxes. To find them here is so much fun. Alfonchihu started out as a logging town and the workers would pass through this town on their way to work and they would have about a 30 minute stop here and it was around lunchtime. So they would jump off of the train, grab bento boxes, have a quick lunch before heading on their way. Today, there are no loggers that pass through here anymore, but tourists do, and they keep the tradition of bento boxes alive. So we're here to participate in the tradition. They came in these octagonal boxes. It looks delicious. I'm super curious. So we've each ordered different ones, and I'm gonna try the chicken leg. It smells really good. It's got some kind of sweet, and uh, spicy marinade, or I'm, I'm not sure. It's not spicy, but it's extremely flavorful. It's, I'd have to say it's some of the best barbecued style chicken I've ever had. Excellent. It's, it's very good. Wait till you try it. If you get to try it, that is. I suppose that threat goes both ways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's excellent. It's, I'm really gonna enjoy this. It's chicken. Oh. All right. Well, Bill got chicken, which is delicious. I got a pork cutlet of some kind. But let's talk about the other things included in our bento boxes. There's rice. There's cooked cabbage. There's bonito. There's bamboo shoots. There's some vegetables that must be in season. It's broccoli right now. Some rice underneath it, which is nice and warm, and also some tofu. And we smell stinky tofu. I don't know what this is yet. We had stinky tofu in Taipei, which at first tasted good, but then we had trouble swallowing it. So we're a little nervous. So I'm gonna try it and find out whether it's stinky tofu or regular. <laughs> I think it's regular. Oh yeah, regular tofu. And the pork. Oh, wow. The pork is just as delicious as the chicken. The pork is extremely thin and incredibly tender and juicy and crispy on the outside with a little bit of flavoring. There's definitely cumin and some black pepper and I'm not sure what else is on it for its spices, but wow, this place really does meet well. I would absolutely recommend coming here and trying probably anything on the menu. This is amazing. Now that I've eaten most of my pork cutlet, strangely, the spices are exactly like Kentucky Fried Chicken, which is really unexpected and really odd, but I think I found where the Colonel found his secret recipe. It's right here in Fanchihu. That was delicious. We just saved a little bit of room, so we're gonna go back and there's some, some treats back here we're gonna check out a little bit later. Actually, I'm glad that it wasn't any bigger so that I still have room for more because there are so many foods here we haven't seen elsewhere or like twists on things that we've seen and I'm really excited to keep eating. We did not think we were making a food video today but apparently we are. shop that we got our train cakes at that we're gonna eat and tell you about in a little bit. It's like a food market down at the end. Oh. Thank you. <laughs>
here's something that we've learned while traveling. When you see a long line, you get in it. And then you figure out what the line is for. Are we standing in line to try the other donut shop in town? Yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> Along with about 50 of our closest friends. This is especially true in Taiwan, where it seems like every town we go to has like these local or neighborhood specialties. We experienced this back in Taichung, where we had this amazing lunch at a place that we had not planned on going to. And I suspect that these are gonna be pretty good as well. But you especially stand in line if it's donuts and there's a line for the donuts. How many hands have we got in order to carry all these amazing foods back to our hotel? There's always room for more food. <laughs> the donuts that we're waiting for are especially fragrant. The smell of it wafts up the hill. In fact, we were in town and I smelled the donuts walking by and I followed the lady <laughs> to ask her where she got them from using my phone as a translator tool. And that's how we ended up in a second line for donuts today. No shame. No regrets. <laughs> we have our donuts. We are not gonna go far before we film these. They're still warm. So yeah, if you're paying attention, multiple donuts are being consumed in today's video. <laughs> Best video ever, at least for us. We have our donuts, we're gonna try donut number two. Please note that this time we learned from our mistake. We got two of them, yeah. It looks amazing. It looks to have some kind of sugar glaze on it, although I don't remember if the last one had it. I could Stop just keep talking. I could just keep talking while she's <laughs> waiting to enjoy her donut. All right. Wait, ready? Okay. Mmm. Both hmm. excellent. I like this one a little bit better. This one is crispier on the outside than the first one. The first one was maybe a little bit sweeter and a little bit. Hmm eggier with the inside being a little bit more doughy. This one is more crispy and cooked more thoroughly than the first one was. It's a nuanced difference. I would buy both of them if you come here so you can compare them yourself because they're that good. They're so different than the ones we have. Not cake donuts at all. Delicious. Heather's the only one that can make these comparisons because I only got two bites. It's like a distant memory for me. You're lucky you got two bites. I know. Kind of like a croissant donut, and it's worth every bite. It's a very hilly town. We are back where we started at the train station. We look for the steam train museum that's here, but it appears to be shut. many trails in this area. We're looking for a logger's trail. So I was really excited to take this path because it's a loggers trail, but it's not just named the loggers trail for no reason. This actually was literally a loggers trail. This is the way that the lumberwood in the area would be taken in and out of this particular mountain. This is how logs used to be hauled out. The track you can see beside me is what two person teams would use to haul the lumber in and out. And there's actually a sign on the way in that's uh, in English, in addition to Chinese, and it explained to us that typically the teams were husband and wife teams hauling the wood in and out, and the person in front kind of was responsible for steering, and they had to make sure that the wood wouldn't go down these paths too quickly. So this was used back during the Japanese colonial era. I, I just find that fascinating, it's so interesting. It was really cool that now it's a pathway that we can walk along. And supposedly there's a bamboo grove coming up. <laughs> oh, this day is so amazing. 
We're definitely okay, but what is this? What does that mean? Here's another one. All the way to the top without stopping. <laughs> Maybe I should have read a little bit more about this trail before starting. There is nothing but stairs, nothing. But now there's also nothing but bamboo surrounding us. Every direction looks like this. It is a wind-free day, so we're not able to enjoy the sound of them clinking together. But still seeing them growing in mass wild here is beautiful. were wondering what was at the top of those stairs the answer is more stairs i wonder if there's a lookout platform at the top that would be pretty epic we're pretty high up you have no idea how <laughs> difficult it is to walk up these stairs point the camera at oneself and talk at the same time and for anyone who's wondering yes we are still going upstairs <laughs> <laughs> they do not end it is uh really something else but See? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really trying to take this all in though because after today we leave the countryside these beautiful mountains and forests and we head back to the city so I'm breathing it all in <laughs> I'm listening to the silence except for the sound of my own voice of course the only thing I hear are some kids playing off in the distance and the sound of my heart pounding in my chest boom 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 stop going upstairs Heather stop going upstairs <laughs> Heather forgot to mention the sound of the mosquitoes buzzing around our heads. The force is strong with them. <laughs> no epic viewpoint from the very top, and what goes up must go back down. And we just walked down this colossal set of stairs. Oh no, I think that's our exit. Blocked off. Trail exit. Oh no. Oh my gosh. Time to get out the translator. If we've read this right, this project was set to complete about 11 years ago. Not okay. I feel like it looks like people have taken this and gotten on up ahead, but our other option is to go all the way back up and down those stairs. I'm not saying that we're gonna do this, but I am saying we'll see you on the other side. He's just testing it out. He's walking beside the stairs. Nothing to see here. We are definitely not on the other side of that fence. Nope. Nope, nothing to see here. Go about your business. Well, for anyone who's wondering, the stairs pop out there. I mean, we just happened to be wandering by and we saw them, so we thought we would tell you. To admit, Finchijo is not at all what we expected it to be like. It has been a delightful city to stroll around in and try the foods and the people here have been so friendly and amazing. We thought we'd only be here for a couple of hours, but we've been here all day, which also means that one of our hikes needs to be put off till tomorrow morning. For now, we still have some more snacks we gotta get for our hike tomorrow. Yeah, so we're heading back to get more food. I should be ashamed, but we have walked so much, I'm not. There's a lady that we met earlier who recommended that we try a local drinkable jelly. <laughs> okay. We never heard of something like this, so we thought we'd give it a try. 
So here we have chia seed and lemon flavor. The lady at the shop added some brown sugar and some other things, and it's a concoction that she recommended, so we're gonna give it a try. It can only be found in this area. Wow, it tastes like fresh lemons. It's not overly sweet, it's very good. And it's just got a little bit of texture with the chia seeds, kind of like a boba tea almost. It's really good, you'll love it. Thinking about it some more, it would be really refreshing on a hot day, although today's not hot. Super refreshing, it costs only $30. That's amazing. Next, we have some train cakes. We were really curious about what they were, and it turns out that they are little cakes shaped sort of like trains. And this recipe has been around for 80 years. Fortunately, somebody stopped by the shop who spoke Chinese and English, and so we have a lot of history about these. The lumberjacks used to stop at the shop and pick up these train cakes. And because of the way that they're made, these would last a lot longer than the bento boxes, which had to be eaten right away. So the lumberjacks were able to take these with them and eat them throughout the day as they got hungry. And they were really affordable too. Well, once we heard the history behind it, we knew we had to give these a try. Two of them are savory and two of them are sweet. And we have no idea which are which. <laughs> I'm hoping for sweet because uh, it's not quite dinner time yet. Let's find out. These really are like edible art. I love that there's sort of this train or locomotive uh, stamped on the top. It's really neat. All right, is it sweet or is it savory? Let's find out. Mmm. What is that? Bean paste? Happy bean paste. I think this is sweet, but it's not overly sweet. I have to say this is not at all what I expected, which is sort of a trend for us when we're traveling. We try all sorts of things that we have no idea what they are. That's the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> Which Bill's right. We're adding this to the list. I expected it to be sort of a little bit more like a bread dough and it's actually denser like a cake dough. It's very thin. I also expect it to be a thicker dough. But actually the emphasis is on the filling, which in this case is apparently red bean paste. It's the sweet one. It is really filling. I can see how the lumberjacks could use this to power them through the day. It's a really tasty treat. Mmm. We have one more purchase to get today, and that is somewhere that we started at almost first thing this morning. And no, I'm not talking about more donuts. Although that would be amazing. Now we are back at the rice cake shop. We're gonna bring some with us because it'll be fun to snack on later. But we've also noticed they have a wasabi sample, which is a product that is actually grown right here. I'm not great with spice, so I think Bill's gonna have to try this for us. All right, wasabi, try, try just a bite. Oh, wow. <laughs> She was watching. <laughs> That's very strong. Open it's, wide. Oh no. Open <laughs> I wide. Can't, I can't. <laughs> Heather doesn't like spicy food. No, I can't handle the heat. <laughs> this, is, this is more of just a tingle though. It's really sweet. It's not bad. I saw your face. It's surprising. You won't have the element of surprise like I had, but it's, it's delicious. different, right? Never had anything like that, I bet. I'm actually getting better at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it tastes like a really strong horseradish. It does not take, taste like the wasabi that we get at Japanese restaurants back home. In some ways it's stronger, in other ways it's a little bit more mild, actually. Yeah. It's a very nice horseradish flavor. It does hit you kind of strong. Oh, wow. I'm glad I tried it, though, so thanks. It's you first, and then it's smooth. <laughs> All right, let's get some rice. Yeah. 